Thanks, Neil. And hello, and hello to some people I already know. Um, we were on the call as well. Thanks for coming in. So you know a bit of my style and, and what I'm like. Uh, so just a bit about me quickly. Um, so I've had my own design company for 17 years and um, I've been doing bilingual design, brochures, websites, branding, Welsh logos, bilingual logos, corporate brands, Welsh brands uh, that are corporate. Um, the, whole, the whole caboodle really, uh, my experience has been vast. So food and drink companies, I do a lot of that now. Um, and I advise on how to treat Welsh, Welshness in that as well. Um, I've seen it work and I've seen it not work. Um, I don't want to pull out any sort of negative examples on this is about how it should work. Um, but prior to my design agency in Wales, I worked in London. I designed Frankie and Benny's restaurant chain group, Chiquitos and quite a lot of, um, I'd say, big brands on the high street I've been involved with. Um, and I've basically uh, designed for all the supermarkets um, on food and non-food. And my design company continues to supply design services for supermarkets, as well as, uh, well, corporate clients, retail, finance, uh, banking, all sorts really. So it's really varied. So I get a really big picture of everything. I'm not just in one sector. And so my advice comes much wider. Um, so also just to say that design and branding is very subjective and I don't know everything, although I know a lot. Um, when I think I know everything, I actually know nothing, if you know what I mean, because I'm always learning as well. Um, so yeah, getting, getting your research done before you design is kind of my motto and my, uh, the way that I like to do things. I don't just dive in and design. It's like, let's get insights. Let's do competitor research. Let's look at the market. Let's consider the people we're designing for and then go in and then make some reasonable decisions around how you present your labeling, your branding, your brochures and yourself and how you market. So um, there's been a couple of surprises in my journey um, as a design company in Wales along the way. Um, and I'll share, share a bit of that as well. So I'm gonna share my screen now. So is that all right, Neil? I can do this. There we are. Yeah, it should be absolutely there we go. Okay. You can all see that, right? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so my first slide, there's a lot going on here, I appreciate this, but I've tried to, in this slide, capture what the brand of Wales is all about. Um, and to do this, I went to a website initially called Ask the Public. It's a fantastic website for finding out what people are searching on Google. Um, and it gives you all the threads and the questions that people are asking. I thought it'd be interesting to find out what people are searching about Wales. Now, you can see in the center diagram here that um, Wales is actually, this search engine has, has included Wales as in, you know, the animal, the whale in this, because it says where whales migrate. <laughs> so ignore that because these, these tools do pick up little glitches, but it does, uh, it does show you that people are, are asking all about how Wales voted on Brexit. And this was done yesterday. So this is quite a recent um, search, uh, search reflection. Um, it says things like, When's Wales, when is Wales out of lockdown? Will Wales be open for Easter? There are lots of things about the rugby, um, are Wales borders open? There's a lot of concerns. Anyway, so if you go to this website, you can download a lot of different graphics, not just this one. This is just one I thought I put on there, it looks pretty as well. Um, but what I got from the research is on the left-hand side, you can see there on my slide, these are the things that people are looking for in Wales and talking about. Rugby, football, holidays, hot tubs, which is really funny, I think, biking, beaches, mountains, lockdown, opening and COVID restrictions. So that is the kind of sense check of what's going on out there online. Um, so that helps to form opinion about Wales. And brand isn't just, you know, how you look, it's behaviour, it's what's going on in all different aspects. Of, of the country. So that's why I've got here on this slide a lot of different things that 
what people associate with Wales are the common visual icons that we all know, the dragon, the flag, the daffodil, the fleur-de-lis, we see it everywhere. Um, the iconic people, and some brands use iconic people and they, they use those, I mean, we'll go through a slide, but um, Penderin Distillery, they use, um, I think it's Dylan Thomas, they've got a version of their, their whiskey um, dedicated to him. Um, and then we've got the landmarks. People know Wales for these landmarks. Um, and of course, at the moment, politics and Mark Drayford and what people see on TV, who they hear on the radio, that all contributes to what people are seeing as the brand of Wales. Because brand isn't about what you say it is, it's what other people perceive it to be. It doesn't mean we can't design your brand to reflect all of the qualities that you are, but it's about perspective. So again, universities, that's a really interesting one. And I think the universities have, you know, from a brand perspective and COVID taken a real hit. So anyway, this is just a, an interesting opening slide to talk about the brand of Wales. I'm just going to go to the next one because this is probably quite controversial, but... Um, You'll see the signs there, Wales is closed. Sorry, we're closed. And I put this slide up because um, in some recent insight research I've been doing, um, I was really surprised to hear people reflecting that they felt that Wales had closed down to them. And I realized that actually, you know, from a tourism point of view, that was really quite damaging. And I couldn't imagine, I thought to myself, well, we've done the right thing in Wales by closing down and our COVID rates are really low and we've got all of that going, going on, which is a good thing. But then the perspective of people coming into Wales is, has been quite damaged. Um, so in some university, Swansea University research that I'd done, I found that people that were planning to go to Swansea University had decided not to go to Swansea University because they felt like the boundaries were going down on Wales and that any time Wales can just close its borders and then they'll get stuck there. And there's all this perception of um, Wales now becoming a country of its own with a border that's been enforced that, you know, <laughs> There's good sides, there's bad sides to it. But from a brand perspective, we've got quite a lot of work to do to open that back up again. And let's just hope that no, that in a couple of months, people won't remember that we closed and that, you know, all will be well and we'll be open and receiving people like we were before. But um, talking about Wales and the economy, I listened to a podcast this morning and I've just popped this slide, this slide in now because... Our economy is very reliant on people from outside of Wales coming in um, on all these people groups here, those on retired incomes, the long distance commuters, um, the eccentric creatives. That's what they said today on this article. I thought that was a bit that's a bit crazy, but um, I think I get what they mean. Uh, the weekenders, holiday makers, tourists, so English and entrepreneurs. These are the people that we need to look after because these are the people that are building our economy you know they're they're coming into Wales they're investing they're spending their money they're interested in Wales so we're going to be reliant on these people so their perspective is more important than ever to us of, of how to and so we can understand how to engage them how to sell to them how to appeal to them so here's um, a little bit of my research so as part of um, working for large and small organizations, over the years, I've gathered quite a lot of insight research and I've com combined it in this slide here, just to present to you what I'm sensing and what the insights have been from people inside of Wales and what they think Wales is about and the brand. So really there's a huge sense of pride. There's a huge sense as well as, are you one of us? Are you in our clan? Are you Welsh? Because if you're Welsh, you're okay. Um, if you know someone that's Welsh, oh, that, well, you're okay as well. There's a real um, sense of pride and community in the heart of Wales. And I think that's a lovely thing. Um, it binds us together. There's friendliness on all fronts. 
Um, obviously, the Welsh language is a huge thing um, and local provenance. So it's about where you're from in Wales. It's not just Wales. It's, oh, I'm Pembrokeshire. Oh, I'm Anglesey. That makes a huge difference if you're in Wales to what you like and where you're from because you identify with certain areas. And um, people associate Wales mainly with dragons. I, I kind of hope that wasn't true. And um, some insights research we did on the over the whole of Wales, speaking to people on the streets, doing surveys, questionnaires, when we asked them what, uh, what represented Wales to them, everybody would say a dragon. And I know that is to do with the flag and, the, and that is our icon really, but I had hoped it would be something else, but yeah, we, we, are, we are with dragons, that's where we are. Um, and rugby being our, punching above our weight, uh, we, we are doing well. The, Winning the rugby obviously pushes our brand position up in a worldview. Um, so that's with, within Wales and then people outside of Wales, what they think of Wales, what they see, what they sense. So it's about the beaches. It's about naturalness, nature, naturalness, feeling, well-being, that kind of thing. So that things are like organic. I know they're not necessarily organic, but back to nature. Um, they would say, yeah, funny sounding language, uh, signs with crazy road names on, you know, that's what they identify Wales with. Friendly is a, is a big thing. I mean, that matches. We are friendly. They see us as friendly. We do good rugby. They see the rugby. Dragons, that matches as well. Choirs. And really this one, which is, uh, I was a bit sort of, uh, I don't know, not surprised, but I wish we weren't about Welsh cakes, but Wales is a lot about Welsh cakes. And a lot of people identify Wales with Welsh cakes. And um, you ask them to think of a supermarket brand and they say the Welsh cakes. And they're, they're on about Tanny Castle because Tanny Castle sell all over the place in, in loads of supermarkets. So they've given Wales a bit of a rep in the supermarkets. Um, castles and adventure. And I think um, the research, say, five years ago on Google searches was that people were searching for adventure and adrenaline sports, outdoor sports um, in Wales more than anything else. And that was what the brand five years ago was being built as. Um, and it, I think it's changed now. I mean, I've done that search uh, yesterday um, and people aren't searching for that anymore. Maybe that's just because of at the moment, we're just coming out of lockdown. Um, but the, it, a lot more of it is about the sport, about competitive rugby and, and football. So hopefully that's interesting to you. Um, I, I just wanted to put this slide in. It's what I, I put in all my workshops is to explain that your branding is more than a logo. So your logo is at the center. It's very important to everything you do. But everything your logo goes on is your identity, it identifies, the logo identifies, and that's then color palette and everything else that belongs with the logo. But then in this outer sphere, we've got brand. And the brand is something that is non-tangible. It's something that people sense and feel about you. And getting that right is, is the art of branding. You know, getting that means that you're, Logo, your identity, your behavior, your marketing, your presence online, your, the way that you answer the phone, uh, the way you do business, all needs to line up to create the brand. So this little extra slide here in the outer sphere, you can see things like your process, reputation, experience, relationship, pricing, USP, all of those things exist in the bigger brand picture. And so I wanted to put this in to just to help us think that if we're building a brand with Welshness adding value, we not only need to look at the logo and what it goes on, but the feel of the brand. And that's harder to do. Um, this is a, a really cool slide about differentiating and, and really, you know, using Welshness to our advantage is also differentiating us and um, looking for something different. So in a marketplace that maybe is crowded with one product, the way to stand out is to look different. And, you know, this crazy person with pink hair is just different. It's so that you can 
you're looking and your eye catches something, goes, ah, that's nice, that's different, I like that. And when people come to Wales, and if it's if they're looking food and drink and products and gifts, ah, what's different, what's special? And um, what can't I get back at home? So I'm not gonna read all the bits out there, you've probably read it by now, but uh, differentiate or die, it's a bit strong. <laughs> Um, so look, these, these water bottles here, they're all Welsh water. Um, the same product in the bottles, they're all from Wales. Um, you, you might get people from England identifying with some of those. Um, the Teenant possibly, um, they might not even care. Um, we care, in Wales we definitely care. Um, if you're from South Wales, you, you might you know, Breck and Carrig is the one for you. Um, you might identify with the, the Welsh water from where you, you are from. Um, so look, this, this slide is all about the fact that the brand is the differentiator. They're all the same thing, but a different logo and a different feel and slightly different packaging sets them apart. So, uh, this slide is all about the brands that are currently in Wales that are part of our brand overall. I mean, like we are part of a bigger picture and all these brands are doing things, all building up the, the value. And this is, we all need to keep an eye on what each other's doing, how we're doing it. Um, there's no right or wrong way. Everyone's finding their own way. Um, if you're an organisation, public sector, you've got very different objectives about promoting Welshness than if you are in the food and drink sector. So this isn't a one size fits all advice session about branding in Wales, because it all depends what your sector is, what products and services you're selling to whom inside or outside of Wales, um, and whether or not being Welsh actually matters, you know, to your audience and to your product. But look, this is a collection here of people that are doing it. Um, you know, I put the Owens logo on there. It's not particularly Welsh. The Owen is a Welsh name. Um, it's a really strong Welsh transport brand and they're consistent and um, they go outside of Wales with a logo on it that says Owens, uh, whether people identify that as Welsh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure actually if it's that important for them. Um, I've looked on their website and marketing a transport business that's based in Wales, they don't need to shout about the fact that they're Welsh. Um, whereas Penderyn, and Tanny Castle, you know, this is, the, this is the blood of them. This is who they are, and this is why people buy them. So I don't know if you can see, I've got Celtic Manor and WRU, and you know, these are the brands that people are engaging with. That's what they're seeing. Um, Clog Eye Gold. Interestingly, um, Clog Eye, if you say the word clog eye, it's like clog as one word and eye as the other word, clog eye. For an English person who doesn't know Welsh language, that sounds really awful, but it's a brand that's grown and we all love clog eye and we say it in Wales, we love it. It's Welsh gold, it's got a good reputation, um, but clog eye to an English person that doesn't know the brand, it doesn't sound great, you know, and this is where, um, you know, you start to think, does it matter that the Welsh word doesn't make sense to an English person? Because it's us, it's our brand, this is who we are, accept it, like it or leave it. Uh, and there's like a confidence in a Welsh brand with a word that doesn't sound great, that I think is a real, is a really good thing, a really good thing in branding and being confident in who you are with your Welsh name. Um, I think, why not? Brand names are, can be crazy, oxymoron, um, and that's how they stand out. I mean, who would have thought that Google would be a word that we use? It's a brand name. It's a made up name, Kodak. Kodak, I mean, it's yonks old, but it is a, it is a crazy word if you think about it and it's totally made up, but, and people have just learned to associate that with the product as the brand has grown. 
So um, next slide. OK, so I'm going to go to some examples now of things that I've worked on. So um, this this one on the left, Cape Stone, not sure if anybody knows it, it's in Pembrokeshire. It's a chicken farm and they do Marks and Spencer's chickens, basically. Uh, and they look after the poultry. They really have got an amazing place there. Well run, animal welfare, great organic chicken. And they didn't really utilize the advantage of being in Wales in their marketing. So my project with them was to uncover whether it was worth them doing it, whether it would give them an advantage, whether they could get more sales from it. Um, I'll just show you the first picture. I know it's a pack of chicken, but you can see there the end result of this, and they are in the process of doing this at the moment, is that we rebranded them as Cape Stone Pembrokeshire because that is the value, local value to local people as well as outside because the value of Pembrokeshire in England is quite high because there's a quite a good amount of advertising going on. Um, we've got green fields, coast, blue sky, naturalness. We've got the dragon. We've got it all going on on this pack to promote the value of Welshness to a market that would appreciate it and, and pay a bit more because it's from Wales. So this was informed by um, quite a big piece of research that we did before, before designing it. We didn't just go in and go, oh, we're gonna slap Pembrokeshire underneath it and then, hey, hopefully we'll get more sales. Um, we've got uh, the natural taste of Welsh poultry, which this drawing on this whole natural value. So we're using messaging on pack to promote the qualities and the essence of that company. So that's just an interesting one to say, informed by insights, customer insight, and it went, it went down really well. I think they're gonna do well with this. Um, Tesco's and Waitrose, I think, are already looking at stocking it. I mean, it is, nobody's really done it with chicken. Welsh lamb is what we are known for. Um, that's come out quite strong in the insights. When people think of Wales, they think of Welsh lamb. Well, it's a kind of protected uh, PGI product and it's been out for years and people know it. So the association is, is strong there, but for chicken, it's not. <laughs> you know, well, chicken can grow anywhere, I suppose, but actually this chicken is in those fields. And, you know, that's why it's different to any other place in Wales and in England. So they're using that. So NatWest is completely different, not food and drink. Um, and this was a project I did um, six or seven years ago where I won a sort of pitch basically based on the fact that NatWest felt that there was a value in regionalizing their banks and in particular by regionalizing uh, Welsh banks it would add value, retain customers, grow business, et cetera, et cetera. So I challenged that and said, I'm not sure that it would. Um, and they gave me um, some time and budget to do insights research around Wales to find out whether it would be well received to rebrand NatWest to NatWest Cymru. Um, and yeah, it, it was, a, it was a, like a year's project, to be honest with you and a lot of work and a lot of insight. And in the end, they did it. And they put Simply Put Cymru on the end of it. Um, and the re research was in the middle. Uh, the research was people didn't really think it would add value to the bank because they, they already used the bank. Um, but NatWest felt that it would add value and they wanted to make those branches special. So, you know, whether it works or not, I don't know if it really adds any value. Certainly the staff, certainly the, the organisation in Wales has had a huge boost from this rebrand. Um, but since this, unfortunately, they started closing lots of branches down. So we've drawn attention to the fact that it's Welsh and then closed a load of branches down. So, you know, it's a difficult one. But that was just in brief, um, just to show you a financial institution against a, a food and drink product. 
and Swansea University. I've done lots of work with Swansea University and the different schools and how they engage and how they market and how they brand. I've worked on the actual branding. Um, and this is interesting because they have two schools of thought there, schools, haha, <laughs> but do they promote Swansea University for the, the value of it being on, the, on a beach, basically? It's the only university on the coast, that close to the coast. Do they sell the beach and the outdoors lifestyle or do they sell the academic value? Um, and this is the tension between getting the marketing right. They need to draw people into the university. A lot of people come because it's coastal. A lot of people come for the lifestyle. But then actually, academically, it's a very strong proposition when you stand it against other universities. Uh, the engineering section, the medical section is super strong. So you can see there that they've done like a photo shoot of people sitting on the beach. So if you're promoting that outside of Wales, very appealing if you want to university. Um, but uh, it's not set in academia, selling naturalness, Welsh lifestyle. But you've got to leverage what you can. So I say, well, go for it. Um, and they've moved away from this imagery very recently. Um, and they're going for more corporate imagery and graduate graduation photos and laboratories and engineering photos. So yeah, this is like, it's not just the logo. It's not just the labeling. It's the whole uh, marketing approach and what they're saying and how they're behaving. How am I doing on time? Am I halfway through, Lee? Uh, you have, well, about, let's say, uh, five to ten minutes left. Oh, gosh, right, okay. Yeah, we, we, we kind of, we, we're coming up to the half hour point just about now, but we, we've got an Okay. Uh, if you want to... Uh, I'm just going to show you this, okay, I'm just, this, <laughs> this is the screen which shows the insights about the chicken company, but what people are saying about uh, Welsh chicken, because uh, the climate in Wales, it's always raining and it's green lushness. The good side is that it always rains in Wales, um, patriotism in Wales, people. So this is insights done with people outside of Wales. Uh, people would buy the Welsh version of something. Actually, this person lives near the border, which is why they would buy it, because it's what uh, they would identify it being close to them. Um, ethical factors, etc. So let me scoot on. So six ways to use your use Wales in your brand. And so to those in marketing, this is going to be obvious to you, but using a Welsh brand name, if you've got one already, great. Um, whether it's worth rebranding, I don't know. Uh, the jury's out on that. Uh, rebranding is, is good, um, but to, to have a new name is something else. So um, using Wales or Cymru within the brand or product name. So like uh, Welsh Water, Dual Cymru, uh, Age Cymru, um, Senedd Cymru, Adding Cymru in it, great. That's a quick way of identifying you as a Welsh brand, um, using it in your product name. Um, you know, you need to describe what your product is clearly, um, but having it bilingual, you know, that shows that it's Welsh as well. That, that probably adds value more to the Welsh market than an English market. Using your Welsh emblems, you know, like we just said, dragons, all that sort of thing. And it is, I find it quite stereotypical to do that. And I like to push it and see what else people can use other than a dragon. But it just, it, you know, you put a dragon on it and it immediately just woof, straight away identifies it. But hey, if you can use a dragon, use a really nice designed dragon. There are plenty of really awful ones out there. Um, use local Welsh provenance. So that means your area like Pembrokeshire, like I said before, and photos. Welsh and bilingual language in the description. Um, so I'm doing quite a lot of labeling now that is, it's not purely bilingual. It has um, some Welshness on it. So people might put a little story on the back of the pack in Welsh as well as English, but the front of the pack would be completely English. So I'm seeing that the rules where you think, well, you either have it Welsh or you have it English, or you have exactly the same Welsh and English are blurring as people are just starting to focus on what the customer really needs to see on the pack rather than what they want to say and feeling like they need to adhere to Welsh language, you know, regulations. 
So um, yeah, another device is putting these little sort of like almost stamps on made in Wales, proudly Welsh, naturally Welsh. And there is a report out that explains quite a lot on how to use those little terms and what people prefer to see. You know, the very, do you think you could sell more product by just putting proudly Welsh on a stamp? I don't know. Um, it depends what your product is and I wouldn't like to say yes or no, but um, it starts to identify it and differentiate it. And you will get people probably within Wales that will like that. Okay, I've got here Blasseteer as well as an example because that's a beautiful sounding name, Blasseteer. It's easy to read. Um, for English people, they can, they can read that too, even though Blasseteer is primarily marketed in Wales. It's a Welsh product for Welsh, Welsh market. Um, but they stuck their neck out there, really. It's like, this is the Welsh name. We're not apologetic. We're not trying to put it into English as well for you. That's our brand. And we've slapped a red dragon on to make sure you all know we are Welsh. It didn't used to have so much of the dragon on the packaging. Okay, next slide. Um, this is a slide just useful to see what English shoppers prefer or what their priorities are and Welsh shoppers. So it's from a report the front called The Value of Welshness, the food and drink Wales produced. But you can see there, you know, the Welsh dragon is right up there. Welsh shoppers and English shoppers see that as the, you know, equally that is uh, something that represents Wales. Um, and then you've got, interestingly, the Welsh landscape image, you know, I thought that might, um, that might position a brand stronger than it's come out in the research there. Anyway, if you want access to this, I can give you, um, give you this. I can see a typo on this slide, so excuse that. Um, so the considerations for Welsh branding. Are you reaching people within Wales or beyond or both? And most people are like, yeah, we don't want to limit ourselves. We need to get outside of Wales. Uh, and so, you know, asking all those questions objectively and actually having someone outside of your company helping you to do that is useful because inside you can be quite, you know, precious about what you are and what you want to be. If somebody comes in and gives you the perspective of someone else, and that's, that's really valuable. So does it matter to them? Does it matter to the customer? Do they really care? Do you care? And I think that if you care, then you should do it. Absolutely, because it's all about you and your brand and being strong, confident in who you are. Um, I've advised quite a few farms to keep their Welsh names. You know, that's who they are. Don't, don't change it to something that just because, um, you know, you want to sell your product in England. Um, stay Welsh. Um, it's important to them and it adds value it, it, and it differentiates as well, as long as it's not a word that's some really crazy collection of, you know, Welsh, uh, you know what I mean, with the double L's and the, well, that you couldn't read. So um, a brand refresh is always good as well. I think people are used to seeing refresh brands um, and it puts you in front of people again. It gives them another reason to buy you. It, it gives them a reason to look at you again. Uh, but then I'm a brand, uh, brand agency, so I would say that. I think, yeah, this is, oh, this is useful just to think about, um, you know, using stories and creating memories for your products. Um, it's a way to connect people. So brand, it's sort of known that it connects to the emotion. It's the bit in us that we don't quite know what it is, but we connect to it. We like it. We want it. And sometimes it doesn't matter if it's expensive. It's something that we desire. And that desire is being created through clever marketing and value propositions and all sorts of things that a company is invested in to create something for you that is more than just the product. So this ginger beer example, which isn't in production anymore, it was, it's quite it's a, an example I use because they've got a story, you know, that um, people used to drink ginger beer in Merthyr and go past the pub and get a bottle of ginger beer. And it was very much linked to the mind. So we've used that in the branding and we've called it a traditional drink. Um, and we put proudly produced in Wales and because of the photography and the slate, you know, it's looking Welsh. So we're using that to create, we all that to create a story. 
Um, and creating memories in marketing for tourism is really, you know, useful for brand building. I mean, even not just tourism, everything. Um, stories, memories, and all of this is great now because we've got social, we've got platforms to share stories on easily. Um, and getting endorsement, um, I, that's something that is difficult to get and you have to be careful who you choose to endorse. But um, Oil for Wales, uh, a brand that um, they use the rugby players to endorse their brand and they get them on the advertising and the radio ads. And they really, they believe that the rugby and, um, and those stars are really helping uplift their brands and they're identifying with those. So that's an interesting one. Hi, Michelle, uh, you asked me to give you a time thing. So yeah. we're about 35 minutes now, so. Okay, well, that's all right. This is, I'll just do this last slide here. Okay, right? great. No okay. So um, brand, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Uh, it's not what you put a label or a, put on a label or a brochure, it's how you do it. It's not what you look like, it's how you behave. And then this is my, my ethos, do research first, get insights and test it. So if you're doing labels, do a few mock-up labels. If you're doing some designs, try and do something that's visual that you can put in front of someone and get some feedback from. And these are some of my designs that I've done here. So Pembrokeshire Atlantic Edge Oysters, the coast is advertised there, Pembrokeshire. Um, Culpit Welsh Cakes, there's a huge story there with the miners. And we've got photos of the miners having um, a Welsh cake out of their lunch boxes. So we've got story and logo and emotive photography and the mines. Um, this is a really different one. So Earl's Kitchen Earl is a famous chef in London, actually, who's Welsh. And he wants to, you know, promote the fact that he's Welsh, he's Welsh Caribbean. And there's a lovely story there in what he's doing. <clears throat> and then this is Black Mountain Honey. Ooh, their sales are rocketing, you know, 40,000 um, jars of, of honey a month. <clears throat> the guy, <clears throat> because he's, he's promoting Wales. He hasn't said Wales there, but if you look at everything else, it's Welsh honey from the Black Mountains in North Wales. Uh, he's got lots of different versions and he's doing um, hot fire honey made with Welsh chilies. So he's really going for it and he's utilizing the um, value of Welshness. And I think that really that's that's probably enough for today. I've got I've got quite a lot more slides that um, go into statistics and reports that I've found, which I can give you access to and send you. So should we call it a day there? And yeah, great. Well, I mean, obviously, if, if you're happy to share your slides afterwards, then people can sort of um, uh, have a look through those um but yeah that that was that was really really interesting thank you michelle sorry we had to cut off we try and keep these uh, oh, sessions i can nice go and... on a long time about <laughs> no, nice i mean what was what was really interesting for me was um obviously you started off with that ask the public website which i've used quite a lot and is a very useful research tool for writing content and understanding what what people are really looking for and that's mm. that's interesting when it comes um comes to Wales because obviously you, uh, also you can filter it by America or you know uh, which part of the world people are in because I think people in uh, the expat community or maybe other people in in uh, America might have different uh, search terms or, or thoughts than people just over the border in say Gloucestershire or Swindon or even as far away as Norwich so that, I think that's a really useful tool uh, the other thing that I took away really was thinking about who might be interested in Wales beyond the wider public and you know that that thing you were saying about um uh you know that the the sort of diaspora of Welsh people around the world and those eccentric entrepreneurs people who are um or eccentric creatives people who you know I've got lots of friends in in London who have no ties to Wales other than the fact that they have a very strong emotional connection to the, whenever they come to the place. So mm. finding ways of targeting those people and tying, you know, trying to understand what it is that, that makes them tick. Um, and yeah, that point you made at the end about speaking to customers in your market with, so, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of sort of iterative testing with products. You know, there's no reason why you can't do focus groups on, on these different things in your target market outside Wales, particularly. 
um, I think is, is really important. Finding people who are going to engage with your brand outside of Wales as well as in it, because you know there's a, there's only three million of us here, um, and that might be might be enough for for some businesses. But I, I get a sense that if you're on the AGP as a program, you have ambitions as a business, right, to to grow, and so you want to an entirely British audience, you want an international audience. So, so finding those. So yeah, that's, uh, if, if anyone has any questions, please bung them in the chat now. Um, so Michelle, while we're waiting for questions to come, if anyone has any, um, <laughs> what would be the first thing if, if someone was reassessing their brand, are there any sort of, let's say, uh, exercises that you would do or they could do internally on, on, on their own uh, just to take you know, 15 minutes, whether that's with other members of staff on their own, for the patient. You know, um, what I find is that um, companies are so used to looking at their own labeling and their own branding so much because it's their world that if you throw it out to someone external, um, even for a 20 minute overview um, and that that person can be very open and free with what they say and they know that it's going to be anonymous, that um, you'll get some real honest feedback about it. Um, <clears throat> now, design is so subjective. So you'll get, oh, I don't like that because I don't like purple or, you know, you'll get crazy things. But if you can, if you can encourage the right, uh, the right feedback by asking like open questions um, or, you know, you're not just showing them a label, but you're saying, can you, you know, look at the website, see what, uh, what things are, see what people's perspective is. Do they get it? Um, do they want it? Uh, what would make them buy it? Um, I think that is really useful. Um, I, one thing I've often found with, you know, with, uh, <clears throat> with sort of customers when doing, doing exercise with clients is sometimes just asking, asking their clients or their customers to write down 10 words they associate with um, the product. Um, and, you know, I, I would imagine, depending on the brand, I would imagine someone, let's say, like Melling for Gwint, who yeah. are a, a strong Welsh brand, Wales would be very much part of that, right? Um, Wales, Wales or Welsh would be, a, would be one of those, those first words. And it'd be interesting to see. Um, and I think some of that is because of the name, Melling for Gwint. It's very clearly a Welsh name. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how uh, those that aren't branded as strongly Welsh, whether that Welshness comes through in, in other ways. You know, yeah. there's a, you know, yeah. obviously stuff like NatWest Cymru. Uh, NatWest is not seen as a as a Welsh business at all, but uh, they obviously want to try and play off the the Welshness. So um, they want to look after their customers, and that's part of what they were doing there is like putting big, big pictures of Wales in branch and you know redoing the stores putting slate putting nice interiors in making everyone feel nice and the value of making people feel nice is what it's all about yeah you know? and I, I suppose i wonder what that that stuff definitely works at home i suppose because like you said that research you showed actually people outside of wales associate the flag the dragon maybe castles visually but the landscape i mean you know the, land, the welsh landscape is is beautiful but you know, to the untrained eye, it's probably no different to the, some of the Scottish Highlands or maybe some of the mm. Lake District or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. It's the, and so that stuff, I mean, the slates, I mean, I would imagine that most people in in, uh, in England would not associate necessarily slate with well, with Wales unless they were, um, unless they, they thought about it. But um, yeah, that's really interesting it, it is, you know, if you're, if you're branding at home, then you can use the more subtle signals around stuff like slate and whatever and landscape but actually outside of Wales you have to be a little bit more strong and it's the language it's the dragon it's the it's the um it's certainly to get the, the message of Welshness across yeah yeah brilliant okay well it doesn't look like we have any um direct questions at the moment so what I'm going to do is uh put in the chat a link uh to, if you want to have a chat with Michelle um, in uh, a one-to-one. -one. Uh, so here we go. That's in the chat uh, now. So if anyone wants to jump on a 15-minute call with Michelle at any point, you're welcome to. And also all upcoming events are going to be listed here. There's actually only one upcoming at the moment. We've got a couple more being confirmed uh, in the next couple of days. 
and also find if you're not already on our weekly newsletter uh, we send a newsletter out once a week just to let people about upcoming uh, know about upcoming events um then that's great so thanks everyone for attending michelle thank you that was really insightful really useful to uh to have a bit of a broader overview sorry we didn't have more time to uh but but are you okay to share the slides or um people can uh or if there's anything in there you want to you know what, um, if some, you know, I've got quite a lot on the value of Welshness report for food and drink. That one I can share. And I'll okay. just do a slim down version of the slides. For Great. That's fine. If, if anyone wants those, then uh, obviously once you've filled in your AG3, you can get a copy of those slides. So fantastic. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks, everyone. Michelle, thanks very much, Michelle. I'll drop you an email shortly. Okay. Uh, thanks for attending, everyone. And uh, see you all again soon. Cheers. Thanks. thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Bye.